Brothers Talking is made possible with the financial support of Goodwill Industries of Southeastern Wisconsin and Metropolitan Chicago and generous Chicagoans like you. Hello, I'm Dr. Obari Cartman. Welcome to Brothers Talking, a monthly program that will bring a cross-generational group of black men together, creating a safe and brave space for honest discussion about the challenges, opportunities, fears, and strengths of black men. The goal of Brothers Talking is to amplify and explore the lived experiences of black men, the pain, joy, success, and failure, and the resulting pathways for growth and self-discovery. Before we dive into updates on personal goals, let me quickly reintroduce the brothers taking this 10-month journey together. Brother Wallace Grader, uh, Benjamin Benji Junius, Jordan Sorrell, Daniel Ash, Xavier Ramey, and Reginald Edwards. During our premiere episode, each of the brothers shared a personal goal they are working towards over our 10 months together, a goal for which they will lean into the other brothers for encouragement and support. Brothers, it's time for updates. Uh, let's start with you, Brother Daniel. Uh, can you remind us what your goal was and how much progress you've made since the last time? Yes, I can do that. So my, my goal was, or is, I should say, to develop sort of a new charter for this mm -hmm. phase of life that I'm entering. Um, you all may recall that I recently became an empty nester um, after raising three boys, and it just, everything felt sort of uncertain. <clears throat> how I'm going to spend my time, what I'm going to sort of, um, do with myself. <clears throat> so to build a charter, I um, was able to find a therapist okay. to do some personal therapeutic work. Um, They're black. For, yeah, it was the first time I've done one-on-one -on -one therapy. Uh -huh. I've done couples therapy before. And it's been scary but good. No, the therapist is <laughs> a therapist black. Yeah, yeah, okay. black male therapist. Oh, nice. Um, I will say this though: um, um, one of the therapists they they ask good questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, people like you, you ask yeah, good yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. And um, we we start exploring things in your childhood. And the therapist said to me, because I'm thinking about who am I going to be. Yeah. And it, they start asking questions, and then the, and I'm responding, and the therapist says to me, "Well, Daniel." have you ever truly determined who you are? Hmm. And, and that was in the context of um, me describing to them how I've always been who I've been asked to be. Hmm. Wow. Since I was a foster kid. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, you can go through life and perform relatively well and being what others mm -hmm. ascribe to you, right? Mm -hmm. And so I've been really sitting with that, mm -hmm. right? As I sort of try to build a charter for this day, my sort of my final chapters of life, and I said that plural, chapters. Mm, okay. Um, you know, knowing who you are is absolutely essential. Yeah. But it's a question that we don't often have the luxury of asking ourselves. Yeah, yeah. But it's not too late, so I'm, I'm in the midst of that work right now. Love it. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got any updates? Progress, regress, stalemates. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My goal, as y'all know, was community law. Yep. And getting uh, a lot of people in my circle, uh, be it from the streets to the suites, to come together and push community law, which is uh, zero tolerance for sisters violence, including domestic violence, mm -hmm. students and killings zero tolerance for the abuse and the rape of women and children, yeah. zero tolerance for the abuse and the robbery of seniors. Yeah. Well, since uh, the mayor had appointed a deputy mayor, mm -hmm. I've been able to meet with him. Okay. And uh, he's in support mm -hmm. of community law because I, like I shared with him, it used to be known as uh, public safety, mm -hmm. but you're hearing the word now, community safety. So what I share with them, the manifestation of community safety is if you have community law where everyone is involved with this. I don't care if you fraternity, sorority, 
uh, Masonic, churches, law enforcement, everybody got to agree to those three things. Mm -hmm. Because me being a former criminal, I know that what made me realize that I was doing wrong against the community when the community came together and said, mm -hmm. Gator, we're not going to hide you. Mm. Here, there's certain crimes that can't happen now. If you in the drug business or whatever it is, we can say y'all to get a good lawyer, but you got to make the decision that you no longer want to be that. And I'm getting a lot of good feedback from County Board President Tony uh, Tony Prattwinkle, nice. from uh, the mayor, and then the new superintendent. Mm -hmm. He's in support of it. So. Before this journey is over, hopefully I'll be doing the show mm -hmm. on the success of it. Or we may be watching the news and we hear where the mayor is saying he's in supporting of it and he's endorsing it because we all have to come together. Nice, very good. Gators winning so far. Gators to be. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 That's crazy. Um, I think for me, so last was that last month we met. Um, I was in a complete fog. Um, work was, I was bogged down with work, mm. um, bogged down with some personal stuff, and I was just overwhelmed. So when I came here last time, I was uh, in a, just a complete daze. Mm -hmm. I was just like, as a robot, just going through, you know, my daily actions. Um, and I was supposed to, my goal was to incorporate, you know, meditating, yeah. especially like, you know, when I was, I found myself like at those, at those moments in yeah, my yeah, life. Yeah. Did not do it. Um, have not been doing it. Um, I realized that maybe it's uh, the winter time. Mm -hmm. I realized it has mm -hmm. to probably do with that. Because I'm very active mm -hmm. um, in the summertime, in the fall time, in the springtime. I like to be outside. I mm -hmm. like to be on my bike. I like to be out the house. I mm -hmm. like to plant and all the, all the other stuff. Um, so I realized, like, okay, now I got to find something during yeah. the 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 winter season where I can kind of like uplift my mood and mm -hmm. um, find a way to release my stress and yeah. and anxiety or whatever, whatever the case may be. So I bought a, I rented a Peloton. I have not hopped on that <laughs> thing, <laughs> and I'm paying a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> so I'm about to send it back, yeah. <laughs> and I'm about to find something that at least I can like try to get myself into. I, I think I want to find some type of sport i want to take a boxing or something so i think i might look into that yeah um that can replace probably like my meditating or something mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that's that's gonna be my goal my goal is to find a new activity yeah. now um during the winter time so nice yeah mm -hmm. that's great yeah, yeah on my end um my goal was to create a um uh sort of a program a, a cohort based program specifically uh, for men who are in the social impact side of work in their profession. Right. Um, and as someone who's in it, I'd say one of the reasons why it was important to me was because, um, especially for black, there are just very few um, men that I meet on a day to day mm -hmm. in my line of work um, in social impact. Uh, and, you know, it's been, f this is my 15th year doing it, mm -hmm. and it's starting to wear on me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because anytime you get a bunch of people together, they're going to create a culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons why I was looking out specifically for more men in the social impact space is because when women are together, they have a culture. Yeah, yeah, they may yeah. not see that. They may yeah. not say that. But there is a culture. Mm -hmm. Just like in construction, there's a bunch of dudes. They got a culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Finance, bros. Mm -hmm. They got a culture. Mm -hmm. Tech board, bros. They got a culture. Right, right. Social impact and women. There's a culture. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so my goal was to be inside this space, you know, where... Um, uh, I was able to bring folks together. The goal originally was to create a full-on program, big cohort, all of this stuff. Well, y'all know what happened, man. I lost, you know, multiple friends. Two of my mentees got shot. Mm -hmm. Lost my stepdad. Um, you know, uh, auntie died from cancer. Mm -hmm. Ended up in 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 Palestine in the West Bank when mm -hmm. the October seventh war broke out. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I was yeah, getting yeah. rocked this yeah, year. Yeah. I got rocked this year. But what I switched it to um, is now something that's live, uh, mm. the unsaid. Uh, so I launched a vodcast mm -hmm. with three mm -hmm. other brothers who are in the social impact space. Yeah. We go live on Instagram um, and we talk about what is unsaid mm -hmm. as black men specifically um, every week. Yeah. Uh, we've got it there, we've got it live on YouTube. 
Um, we've been getting a really nice, consistent following, a couple hundred people mm -hmm. uh, each time they tune in. Usually we get up around like 900 views, but the cooler thing is the comments, mm -hmm. um, the comment mm -hmm. section mm -hmm. where people start talking back with us and reflecting on what we're saying. And the fact that I've been able to grow a friendship mm -hmm. with these three other brothers, you know, when my aunt passed, you know, Jamal comes to my crib with, mm -hmm. you know, he got a newborn baby in tow. He's like, I'm still gonna check on you, bro. Like, he <laughs> came over with some chicken. Um, we just sitting out on my patio, man. He's just like, let me cry it out, nice. you know. Um, when I got back from, from Tel Aviv and, and the West Bank, um, you know, Dion, first things, call me up. Hey, mm -hmm. FaceTime, don't, I don't want to hear your voice, boy. Pick it up, pick <laughs> yeah, it up, I want to yeah, see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, I got these brothers chasing me down now. Yeah, yeah. And That's it's good. been, I didn't intend to have it be so uh, um, beneficial to me. Yeah. <laughs> I intended to make a space for other guys. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just been real dope because even though it's not 25, 30 people, it's yeah. four of us, yeah. it's like super impactful. And now it's like an integral part of my mm -hmm. life. I love it. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's so cool. That's yeah, good. Excellent. The pivot is important. Yeah. 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 So I, um, the goal I had was around podcasts. Yeah. I've always wanted to do a podcast. Yeah. And so my back, <coughs> excuse my voice a little bit, my back end of my years has been really busy and really just chaotic in a lot of ways. And so I decided to take a reset for a moment. I've had some conversations that have gone well. That's all good. But I was like, I just had to focus in more on my uh, mental and emotional health mm -hmm. and also physical. And so, you know, joined the gym, doing mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. uh, which is really good. And then I stopped drinking, which is the other oh, thing. Right. Okay. Didn't have a issue per se, but I'm at events a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, happy yeah. hour central like every yeah. day. Yeah. Think yeah. about because yeah. I go to my work events. I go out a lot of times. It's yeah. like holiday it's parties, like having holiday parties, yeah, galas, yeah, yeah, yeah. events. You know, whatever. And so it's been really helping me kind of reset a little nice. bit because part of it is like, man, it's, a, it's just a heaviness and. Almost like a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Somebody says something wrong. I said nothing, nothing's wrong. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to like take a break. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just chill out for a moment. It's like you know, every day I'll be wrong. But yeah. it's just, it's an interesting culture when it comes to that too. Yeah, to yeah. your point, drinking is so right. much a part of the culture. You stop. People yeah. are worried about you. Yeah, yeah. it's like you know they doing like true. a health and wellness. It's like yeah. I'm good. I just want to you know. So that's been good, and it's it's just really really good to get me refocused to yeah. coming to 24 because I still have that podcast one of my guys and I are meeting in January so it's going well but mm -hmm. I had to do some stuff for me first yeah to get where, where I need to go yeah beautiful Benji yeah um, I, I'm really excited um, about what's coming through the pipelines I think last time um, I didn't have much of an update but <laughs> my my goal was to produce a staged reading yeah, yeah. right um, and as I started really thinking about what script um, mm -hmm. are we gonna use, I naturally start kind of leaning toward scripts that I'm very familiar with mm -hmm. and that have heavy um, like female roles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, okay, trying to challenge myself a little bit and we know how I feel about like men in spaces, mm -hmm. right? Or all men in spaces. And so I, challenge myself to really try and think about the journey that we've been on here yeah. and i chose a script that is so beautifully written um with movement and music and verse and lyric and storytelling and it's a story of six black men mm. who come together for a therapy session oh, wow. and <laughs> and cool. their imaginations just run wild like it goes nuts yeah and um, it's such a beautiful there's such th there's such a beautiful threshold where they're addressing their traumas mm -hmm. and um, they are um, talking about like their childhoods and things of that nature and and the playwright um, does a really good job of uh, using their experiences um, to pretty much cause conflict among the six, but then they lean into each other to survive. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the topics and a lot of the things that we've covered over the past few months and that we'll cover in the future are present mm -hmm. in that piece. And um, I think something that makes me even more excited about it is that um, I 
have partnered with Can TV um, mm -hmm. to televise this project. I and so we'll, we'll be working together um, on its full production. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're hoping to see something by the spring. Yeah. But uh, the story that's in um, that piece, and I don't know if I can say like the name of it or if I can name the playwright, um, but the playwright's <laughs> name, um, there are some things we still have to work out on the back end, but the play that we are hoping to do is called For Colored Boys Who Considered Suicide mm. When the Hue Gets Too Heavy. Wow. Mm. And it's a fairly new production by Ryan, by Ryan Cameron. Okay. Um, and, um, and of course it is inspired by um, Ntozaki Shange's For Colored right, Girls. Right, right. And uh, the script is just so beautiful and vulnerable and powerful at the mm. same time and I'm really excited to attack it and uh, the challenge for me is I am intentionally stepping into a cast of all men mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and so so I'm excited to um, take that on. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. No, we can't wait to see it. Cool. At Goodwill, we transform lives through the power of work. We believe work is at the heart of human potential through a bold mission of connecting people to work, preparing people for life. Goodwill Industries of Southeastern Wisconsin and Metropolitan Chicago is creating meaningful impact in the communities where we live, work, and serve. By eliminating barriers, we are making fulfilling work available to all so that individuals and communities can thrive Go to GoodwillSEW.com to learn how to have the power to support our mission. Let's remember the foundation upon which CAN TV was built, community. Together, we're not just creating television, we're shaping history, one story, one life, one person, one experience at a time. Every story matters Every voice is significant, and every individual deserves a platform. Our topic today is how do black men express emotions? I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, real men don't cry, but contrary mm. to what we might have been told via the words and actions of our family and friends growing up, a good cry might just be what the doctor ordered. Black men experience a number of health disparities and lower life expectancy, largely due to generational traumas and institutional racism, which impacts individual decisions we make about diet, stress relief, and emotional regulation. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, only 6% of black men report daily feelings of anxiety or depression, but perhaps men express emotions in ways that aren't accurately measured by the scales they use. 26% of black men with anxiety or depression use mental health services compared to 45% of white men, but perhaps there are barriers to access and relevance of services that must be considered. And does it make sense for us to still compare ourselves to white men as the standard? Mm -hmm. According to the American Psychiatric Association, a common myth is that boys and men of color often suffer in silence by choosing to bottle up their emotions, when in fact, on some occasions, men do willingly hold in their emotions too often when men do express their emotions, healthcare providers, employers, law enforcement, and sometimes our intimate partners misidentify men's emotions entirely. A 2012 study found that there are three barriers that prevent help seeking among boys and men of color. One, the individual level, isolation. Two, the social level, interaction with others. And three, the community level, negative beliefs about mental health care. To better engage boys and men of color in mental health services, researchers argue that there must be interventions at all levels to help motivate them to seek help when needed. Also, we must be creative about the types of help to seek. With the shortage of providers, we must create accessible opportunities for men to gather, be honest, and support each other in ways that are consistent with our cultural needs. But what does that look like? Where should it happen? What types of expertise is necessary to have in those rooms? How do black men express emotions? What are the appropriate moments to subdue emotional expression? How can we create more safe opportunities to encourage men to express the full range of human emotions? Brothers, lots to talk about. Let's get into it. Um, I'm gonna start here. I'm actually, we've talked about fathers before. I'm curious to know 
if you think about your primary caregivers, the influential men in your life, grandfathers, fathers, whoever was the men that you looked up to, I'm curious to know if y'all can think of moments that you saw them cry or be emotional in, in any other way besides anger. Uh, what's, what's, what stands out to you and what you saw modeled as what men do about emotional expression in your You know, um, from a hip hop perspective. Okay. <laughs> one of the uh, cuts from the Ghetto Boy, I think it was Scarface. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he says, uh, never seen a man cry mm -hmm. till he saw a man die. Mm. So, I've been around a lot of influential men from Jesse Jackson to Farrakhan to y'all. Yeah. If I was to run into you at a funeral where a loved one had died, mm -hmm. you'll see the emotions come out of them where mm -hmm. you may not see because just like myself, mm -hmm. when my brother, you know, got killed. Yeah. You realize that you're remembering a whole lot of things, so you're not caring about who's around you, mm -hmm. okay? You'll grab your eyes and then your eyes are turning to, then you make that old face where you really don't care mm -hmm. because y'all don't know what I'm going through yeah. because I remember the last time we were together and yeah. what we talked about doing in the future. So, like when Farrakhan's son mm -hmm. died, the second son, yeah. there no died, you can see the pain with the strength within him. Mm -hmm. But could you imagine how he felt and how he let himself go when he with his wife, mm -hmm. the mother of that child? Yeah. Or when you see your partner, his child may have got killed. And you can see the pain that's within him that he got to release, but he can only release it with his wife because he understands that his tears and the noise he might make will not be as loud as hers. Hmm. So a lot of me, all of us here, yeah. have, been, have had that moment where we just give within ourselves because sometimes an individual will take your pain and try to make it your weakness. Mm -hmm. No, that's real. Um, so only at funerals is what I'm hearing so far. Death is the only time, right? Anybody else have different experiences where you saw men express the range of emotions? That's, I'm, I'm with Gator. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about all the men that have been in my life and really digging back my memory bank and majority of the time I seen men cry had been in funerals. Mm. I think that's the only time I seen my father cry mm. was when his brother died. Yeah. I, I seen him angry, but I've never seen him cry and be just vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and I also see men cry in church when, you know, praising mm. God mm. and during, during worship. Those are like my only two memories I really have of men really crying during those What about moments. joy? You ever say your father giddy with joy? I have. Okay. I have. Well, he's with his brothers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I seen him with joy. Yeah, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I, I, I seen joy. Okay. But that that piece of being vulnerable and, and being able to cry and express yourself in yeah. sadness or whatever the case may be, I have not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since you mentioned joy, because my father passed when I was seven, so I only have a very short time of memory. Yeah. But I can remember the joyous moments when it was my, my mother, or how I treated my mother, how my mother felt. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, I never saw or ever saw my father cry mm -hmm. in seven years, you know? Yeah. So I think that's, um, I don't know, I just thought about that. I was like, I never really saw him cry until we cried, interestingly enough, at his funeral mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. when he passed away. Like, I see my friends cry and stuff. Yeah. The one thing I do remember you talking about crying <clears throat> was a friend of mine was a, we probably in like our early twenties and he had been in a relationship in a relationship, relationship. He came to me and said, you know, he broke his girlfriend broke up because his father couldn't accept me. Why did why why can't people accept me for who I am? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and just was yeah. really distraught about it. Yeah. That's the first time I, I really saw somebody cry to that extent. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, I've been around w women most of my life, so yeah. it's just a different feel, you know, versus yeah. what I was used to. Yeah. And I thought it's probably, maybe it's probably the first time I may have saw somebody to that extent do it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus, you know, what I, what I was used to when I was growing up. Yeah. Xavier mentioned crying very casually as you were talking about your goals. You just said it like it was nothing. Is yeah. that, did you, do you work, is that, a, is that a new version of you that can do it and be so openly expressive and comfortable about sharing that with a group of men? Uh, it's seasons of my life mm -hmm. uh, where there may be more tears. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a season now where there's a lot more tears. Yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. the last 365 days, mm -hmm. bruh, yeah, that yeah, pillow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's, it's just been hard. But again, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's burying eight people. Right, right. Right, like it hurts. Yeah. Um, you know, when I got back, you know, from the Middle East, I cried every morning. Mm -hmm. um, just from just having some breathing space, like you were there, man. Like having some breathing space to process not only what we had seen mm -hmm. in, you know, when the, the rocket started, when Hamas started firing the rockets, um, and it's just the terror that you mm -hmm. feel. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not used to the feeling of terror. Yeah. I've been scared before, yeah, yeah. you know, um, but also terror for others. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I remember even being downstairs in the bomb shelter, we got down, I remember we got into the airport, um, we get downstairs and I'm looking around, everybody's screaming, it's just kids, it's women, elders, everybody's just sheltering down. I remember just standing there and just like tearing up mm -hmm. and having to go through this calculus in my mind of, you know, you just spent the last however long it took to get in there trying to make sure everybody was off this bus, the bus was secure, you ran back, you got locked in the bus, mm -hmm. you felt that sense of helplessness, you find, you know, break the emergency exit, you get out the bus, you run, everybody's down there, you find they down there and everybody scream. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, you know, and I got, I was like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, not yeah. one tear fell, Yeah, not one. Yeah. Um, but um, they were there. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is the challenge of, of the way in which, I mean, it's interesting we're talking about like, when did you see men cry? And I think one of the challenges is that in the, in the rite of passage and then lifetime of proving that you are worth being called a man, mm -hmm. tears are the evidence of your lack of readiness mm -hmm. to be a man mm -hmm. for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like tears are just evidence that you, you ain't got it. Yeah, yeah, you ain't yeah, got it. Yeah. You can't help, yeah. you can't protect, you can't give, yeah. you can't serve, you can't mm -hmm. speak because now you're overcome by this thing. Mm -hmm. And if you take time for that, you can't execute on the only reason you should exist. Mm -hmm. um, not declaratively like that's the only reason I should exist, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying like that is the world that I've grown up in that I yeah. definitely feel. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, when I go back to the men in my life, um, black men, yeah. I have not seen cry that much. White yeah. men, I've seen cry quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been in a social impact space and, and the men that are there in leadership are usually white men. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I, I'm, I've been fortunate enough to be able to get close to and be in the confidence in, uh, in be in the confidence of many, many races of men. Yeah. And we do emote differently and we also have different permissions for emoting. Sure. And we emote in different places when we do let it out. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen executive directors cry, you mm -hmm. know, when, mm -hmm. when, when I went to Larry's funeral, I mean, I was thinking about, mm -hmm. I went to my mentee's funeral, man, some dude just put a bullet in his stomach right, right around the corner from the youth center. Mm -hmm. You know, I was with him for 10 years doing, you mm -hmm. know, just making sure he made it. Yeah. Um, you know, so when I was at his funeral in July, you know, it was, I was looking at even that, like all, most of the men, we were just all in the back. And that's like every, I go to a lot of funerals, all the men just be standing in the back. Yeah, yeah. The young men, the old men, we just be standing in the back. The women be all up in the front. Yeah. They are crying. They are able to release, release, release. And we are standing in the back, making sure everything's taken care of. If somebody yeah. break down too much, we gonna escort them out. Yeah, 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 like yeah, even yeah, yeah. there, yeah. even there. Um, so I just, I, I, I think, one of the things for me is just when it comes to tears, whether it be my father, I only remember one time when he cried, mm. and that was when he felt I was playing games with my, with my mom to get him in trouble. Like, you know, like kids will play one parent against the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was very clear. He was like, don't you ever play uh -huh. my wife against me. Mm -hmm. And he started crying. Oh, wow. Like, and I was just like, whoa, this is serious. Yeah. Like, I ain't know, I ain't know I did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I ain't know it was yeah. like that, so. From what, the know. way you describe the men in the back of a funeral, especially yeah. here in Chicago, where at funerals shape off. Yeah. 
It, and, and that was it. A lot of them was out front too. Yeah, 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 they had yeah, a five yeah. O car yeah. right outside, mm-hmm. right. making sure because this was it was a, it was a you know it might be some retaliation. Right, right, right. Like, I'm, I'm just curious just about us. the function of that. Is that something that we should embrace? Is that something we should be encouraging of ourselves? Uh, you describe a moment on the bus when they showed the video of you helping people um, get on and off, and they said you looked very calm. But you said, and, and beneath the calm, just like you, there's a, a world of terror. Mm-hmm. But then we, we sort of practice not showing it to keep things together so that, um, and, and you know, and I think that it's beautiful that you could describe going back to the, to the pillow and crying. But is there something useful about us practicing and being prepared to be able to protect, hold it together for at least those moments? Right, because I don't know that it, I don't know that the alternative is better than we fall apart. Yeah, it just falls but I don't enough. think that has to be yeah. that characteristic. I don't think it has to be gendered, right? Um, I don't think it's just a a man's role to do that. I think any human being can develop the capacity to manage those moments, if you will. Like, sure. But I, what I appreciate appreciate about what Xavier's saying is that you have to give yourself permission at some point to release yeah, 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 what yeah. our bodies need to release. Yeah. When, I, when I think about my upbringing, very similar to everyone else, like, so very, first of all, we were told not to cry, you yeah, know, yeah, that whole yeah, point, yeah, like, right. like, you know, man up, right? Man up, yeah, 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 and then, and then witnessing, you know, at my, my, for my father, at my grandmother's um, funeral, I remember the moment where he, allowed himself to cry, mm-hmm. but he was fighting it so much, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, he was, mm-hmm. he, it was like, get, your, get, get it together, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, what I've appreciated as I've grown up and, and aged is that I do feel that people, men, black men, have given themselves permission to be more expressive, mm-hmm. not just at the funeral. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I think about, when, <laughs> this is gonna sound so, Paradoxical, uh, a paradox, right? It's sort of, sort of or contrary to what we're saying. I played football in high school, and we we had a really good football team in Ohio, the best football state in the country, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, I know a lot of people on good football teams that never actually hit the field. Did you play, or were you didn't know? You were just keeping that bench. <laughs> I was I was fully loaded, uh, <laughs> but 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 I think about it. You may I'm thinking about this. We the the emotion mm-hmm. of playing high level football mm-hmm. or the high school in this context, people would cry, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it was and you had permission in that mm-hmm, space. Mm-hmm. Like it was almost like going to war, yeah, right? And, yeah. and people would use all those type of metaphors. But I, now I'm just thinking back because when Gator was talking about funerals, I was thinking, what are other, other, there had to be other times. And I immediately went back to that moment mm-hmm. where before a state championship game, like you're full of emotion, you're loud. Mm-hmm. This is back in like 1988, 89, right? You, you're allowed to like embrace one another, hold mm-hmm. each other, mm-hmm. like in a, in a way that in other environments we weren't, at least for me, mm-hmm. you just didn't have those permissions, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. To be that vulnerable and that that open. Yeah. Now, of course, then you would go out and you would play, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it would be amazingly intense and violent. Um, but as I again, as I've aged, um, I think for me, giving myself the permissions that I probably should have been given my entire life didn't really come until I had children. Mm-hmm. And it just, just, I think, allowing myself to be a parent that had sort of just deep emotional connection to my boys. Mm-hmm. Um, Were you deliberate about them seeing you emotional? Yeah, yeah. So I don't so, know if so I, I don't know if, if, if I, it was, them, I they, planned they it. Say, yeah. Yeah. Would they say I've seen my my father cry? I've seen my father rejoice. Yeah, I've yeah, seen my father yeah. afraid. I, I fear is hard were. for me. So fear is tricky. It's, it's tricky. Right. But I, I, I would love to, I'm gonna ask them this question, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. they've definitely seen me cry. Yeah. I think they've gotten embarrassed by it. Like mm. even, even my kid who I just dropped off at Howard. Yeah. I think he was just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. he kind of gave me that look, but I think it was just like the being embarrassed as an 18 year old, like his parents. But it, 
but again, I, I don't think... You cried in that moment when you, like, drove away? Like, oh, yeah. Even if, uh, yeah. Right. You know, people are like, oh, if, you know, his mom is going to lose us. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, lost yeah. it, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, it, with all the boys, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. moments where you see them and you see them so happy and you're just so pleased with it. And mm -hmm. sometimes you're mm -hmm. scared to death about mm -hmm. their futures. Mm -hmm. And you feel, you just feel so insecure and, like, out of control and living in... Chicago yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. three black boys. Yeah. Like, there are times I've had deep anxiety. Yeah. Um, and that, and that, I've allowed that anxiety to, to, to manifest, like whether it's crying, whether it's screaming, whether mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, banging my fist on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I've still, the, the utility of that in those moments, mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder what happens if a child sees their father falling apart or they perceive of, and then that makes them nervous versus the responsibility we have to hold it together as a part of the creating the safety. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, was, I, was, I went through a bad breakup, mm -hmm. um, and my family and I are very close, and I, my little nephews were there, my little cousins, yeah. and I was telling them, you know what happened um, during a breakup? And I let myself like full on just just cry. Mm -hmm. um, and then my it's so funny because one of my nephews came up to me. He was like, "Uncle Reggie, you okay?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm okay." He was he's like, "It's okay to cry." Mm -hmm. And that wow. that that just yeah. made me smile because um, I was I knew I was able to be vulnerable, but also I I had to allow myself because I knew they was in the room watching. Yeah. But I wanted to know like it's okay like we we get our heart hurt sometimes mm -hmm. and it's okay to be sad. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was kind of a teaching moment for me too, and it mm -hmm, felt good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, See, I right. think that's the that's important. Mm -hmm. I I don't think I was taught this, but it's okay to feel um, like you've been broken mm -hmm, and express mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But what I've tried to do, and, uh, and I didn't think about it this way when I'm doing it, was to demonstrate what it takes to sort of like recover. Mm, that's right. Or heal, yeah. Or you know, repair yourself, yeah. right? And I, I and it's the seeing that cycle. Yeah. I think with my father, and I, and this is gonna sound like a harsh critique of my my dad, but I saw my dad hurt, mm -hmm. and my, in particular, you know, think about drinking. Um, my dad drank a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but I never was able to bear witness to like, like how he tried to build himself up, up mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the whole, you know, he's no longer with us. And so I just, I never saw the other side of that. Just, yeah. you know, the drinking was basically to me the way he would just let go, mm -hmm. like, like he would escape. Mm -hmm. But I never saw those moments where, he, and I'm sure he had them, because I, I, he was a really thoughtful person and an amazing person. But I never, we never talked about like, mm -hmm. how he would come out of those moments when yeah. he would like sober up and get him somehow muscle their energy to put that uniform, but, you know, he worked in the steel mills, mm -hmm. but put the, the mm -hmm. you know, the, the blue collar uniform on, mm -hmm. the, the boots with the steel toe and do all of the stuff he would had to do and go to work. Yeah. He somehow did it, yeah. but we didn't witness, we just sort of witnessed the, um, the guy who was, was drunk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't wis witness the what he would go through to actually stand back up mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and 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 muster the energy to do all the positive things that he did. Yeah. That was b blind to us. Like mm -hmm. we didn't have any mm -hmm. sight lines. I didn't have any sight lines into that. But yeah. I'm, and I wish I had it. I wish we had talked about it because mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I would have mm -hmm. been better prepared for the moments I felt crushed. Yeah. But, you know, when I got yeah. to college. You know, I'm f I felt crushed, yeah, 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 I, yeah, amazing yeah. crushed, but I didn't know how to talk about it. Yeah. I didn't feel like I had permission to talk about yeah. it. I wonder if we're in a different time, though, where we can see brokenness and we can see those things being modeled. Because I feel like I'm only 40, 42 coming up. In the last 10 years, at least in my life or so, I, I, I've seen it much more modeled and behavior, at least in my circle, in my mm -hmm. circumstances, my, around my people where you know people who are showing brokenness and feeling much more vulnerable than mm -hmm. ever before because mm -hmm. when i was growing up never saw it you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's taught to be tough you have to suck it up yeah you have to do what you have to do right. never saw that but now maybe it's social media maybe it's just the culture we're in mm -hmm. maybe it's the culture of acceptance i see it much more mm -hmm. and more you know i've seen it modeled 
in a much more different way. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's if it's time and space that we're seeing that. Yeah. If we're if we're getting permission to do it, then yeah. we were, once were. Time, space, and class also. Yeah. You know, so because um, we're also seeing an increase of addictions. Mm-hmm. These young people popping pills like crazy, and that connection between the numbing of emotions. And then the not having the permission, I think, is a, is a, is a weird, dangerous moment for you that, know, too. One of the things, I was like just what you were saying. Yeah. We was raised that, no, you don't cry. You're going to find a corner and you cry. Yeah, 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 yeah. But here, recently, behind, like you said, you see so many things, like where y'all was at. He didn't really fully grab his sponge, he called the pillow, till he got home and mm-hmm. realized the terror that an individual mm-hmm. was under. Yeah. I find myself crying just thinking about the times when I should have cried and didn't. Oh, wow. Mm. That's good. When mother died, I mm-hmm. held it up, mm-hmm. tightened it up. But the one thing that I love is the fact that when I was vulnerable, my sons was right there to say, hey, Dad, mm-hmm. it's all right. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Take you off of there and let me hear what's happening. That's good. And with that, it made it easy for them if the time come where they have to cry because it's an emotion. Mm-hmm. You got to find release yeah. through the tears yeah. Yeah. to release stress. Yeah. But that's no. a lot of stress. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody had the, uh, uh, the alternative experience where you were emotional or vulnerable and got clowned for it or lost oh, something man, for it? Or man. Um, <laughs> I mean, my pops, man, I remember that's when I, I made a decision when I was like probably 14, I mm-hmm. think. And he was gone within four years of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I had one moment where I was like, man, I'm a... I'm a, I'm a I'm hurting right now. Yeah. I was really going through, like, I remember just going through some stuff. And one of the challenges is when you, you know, a lot of people just think kids, is, it's just, you think it's the end of the world. Everything yeah, the end yeah, of the yeah, world, yeah, you yeah. know. And, um, you know, my fam, my fam was not one that I think had a level of emotional literacy mm-hmm. um, uh, or awareness about what emotions were. Like mm-hmm. emotions are a form of intelligence. Yeah, they're yeah. a form of knowledge. They, are right. a sim- they point to symptoms of something that the body is regulating. That's right, right. Um, tears are evidence of a stress release hormone, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. these sorts of things. Like we ain't know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you cry, you weep. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time I, I tested my pops. Mm. I tested him, and I knew I was gonna test him because yeah. I knew I was down. And he hadn't really asked one question in yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah, actually yeah. going through what I know now. What would have been had I had a therapist or had I had a, I never went to a hospital until I was out of college. Yeah. Um, had I actually had a, a, um, a pediatrician, I think he probably would have said that was clinical depression mm-hmm. that I was going through, mm-hmm. now knowing what I know. Yeah. Um, but at the time, it was just, hey, man, get them grades right. Mm-hmm. Like, what you doing? Like, why, mm-hmm. you, like, why are you always moping around the house? Mm-hmm. Always mm-hmm. moping around the house. You're so yeah. sad and scared. I remember, one, I, mean, I remember one time my mom got so fed up, she was like, just, just kill yourself then. Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah, yeah. like that hurt. Yeah, you know, like yeah. she and I had to talk about that. Yeah, uh, about a year or two ago. But I went to my pops. I remember he was on the front porch, and I just sat down next to him. He was on a chair. We used to always keep the windows open when it rained and all of that kind of mm. stuff. Just look out. He was always out there, usually with a beer and a smoke. Mm. And uh, I just went to him and tried to like. Talk. I was like, man, you know, I'm just feeling this and feeling that, and I was just talking. You know, I was just you know just wondering. You know, um, I don't know what to do and mm-hmm. all of this. And he looked at me, just started laughing. Oh shit. He just started laughing. Yeah. He's like, boy, if you don't stop all that mm-hmm, whining. Mm-hmm. I just been like, Whew, just massive deflation. Mm-hmm. Just massive deflation. Mm-hmm. Um, nowhere to put any of that energy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, until I left. Yeah. You know, no, no real receptacle. My mom was dope. She was awesome with it. Yeah. You know, but, um, you know, she was learning. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, my brothers were, had learned from them, mm-hmm. and especially from my dad. Um, and my older brothers who were long gone out of the house, you know, one of them was a cop. He, he, mm-hmm. he rough you up. You know, mm-hmm. he was loving. Mm-hmm. But, you know, my other brothers were the same thing. Everybody's just beating up boys. That was mm-hmm. that was mostly it. Yeah. Um, you know, you got to get tough. And plus, we was in Lawndale, man. Yeah. Like yeah. nobody. The, the thing is, they, they, they make, you know, black boys. I think that we're I was raised um, and I was 
people supported this type of raising for me as a black boy. Yeah. Um, that if that they, it's better that family hits you harder than the streets ever would. Yeah. yeah. So that they can prepare you for that. Yeah. And I fought that for years um, and had terrible relationships with a lot of my brothers and the people around me because I was like, y'all, I'm never going to fight those people. Yeah. I'm not that. And I'm, I knew that I was going to use my voice one day. I knew that I was a poet. I knew that I liked musical theater. I knew yeah. that I liked all these other things, but they had no comprehension of black boys doing that. Mm -hmm. And that definitely would only get you more beat up, mm -hmm. more stomped mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. and, and I did get beat up and stomped mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and robbed and all types of stuff. But, I, you know, I think they were afraid that it would cost me my life to be mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. or to be emotional. Yeah. Um, because we know a lot of people who ha it has cost them their lives. Hold on, real quick. When Benji's quiet, I always it always makes me so <laughs> much. Uh, it brings more attention to you when you're quiet. Oh, um, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> it it made me wonder, and this is for both of y'all, because my experience has been as a heterosexual black man, yeah. and I'm curious about whether or not gay black men have more room, if there's more of a space to express more emotional. I don't know, range, or if this, or if, it, if it's consistent. If what we're talking about is the same thing, is it the same thing in your experiences and your relationships? And I mean, uh, in my experience, I think that they are similar. Hmm. Um, I've never seen my father cry. Yeah. Um, I don't really cry. I think that control is a really huge factor, hmm. um, and I was taught just young and especially like young in my career um i had a few different mentors and one told me that um that crying was just inappropriate mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. when you cry you lose credibility like mm -hmm. people don't respect you when you cry yeah. um because now you're op now it's assumed that you're operating from a place of emotion mm -hmm. um rather than logic mm -hmm. and um and so I think for me, I, you know, I take that experience and I take all of my other experiences and I just, I, I don't, I don't really know how to cry. Mm -hmm. I should say like, I, mm -hmm. that's not something I really know how to tap into. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've only ever cried. I cried on my wedding day mm -hmm. and I cry when I'm pissed mm -hmm. and it, it takes mm -hmm. a, and it takes a lot to get me like that upset because yeah. again, I, I like to think I'm pretty well controlled. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel mentioned um, um, just the experience like with his sons. That's one of the very reasons I struggle with. I don't think I want children because that's one thing I cannot control, right? Mm -hmm. Like when they get to a certain age and they get to a certain point in their lives, that's not something I can control. And mm -hmm. so I think that um, my tears, I didn't have them when my mom passed mm -hmm. um, a couple of months ago. And again, that was a time where we needed logical, like we needed re like reasonable, pe reasonable people making decisions. And that was really just a testament to everything, mm -hmm. I think, in my life. And so... Did it come up and you stuffed it or numbed it or distracted yourself or did it not even come up i don't know hmm. um if it came up i don't know it was there yeah, yeah, um yeah. and so i'm not sure hmm. if, if it came up at all mm -hmm. so for me the experiences are similar mm -hmm. i think that gay men in my experience as a, as a gay man more people expect me to cry mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. than they would um like a heterosexual counterpart. Do you feel like you are working harder to hold it in because of the expectation? Mm. Possibly. Mm. I don't know. I've never explored it. <laughs> I, I never explored it. Um, could be. I mean, you know, I think that people already view me at, this is my perception of other people. I think people, you know, you walk into the room and I think people already um, see me as sweet, mm. soft, mm -hmm. sugar in the tank, sissy, mm -hmm. feminine. Like, you know, so all of those different things. And I think the one of the most, uh, I think one of the strongest 
areas of my life has been intellect. It, mm. it has been, I can navigate various situations, yeah. right? And and I think that has always been my strength. And, and I hesitate to say strength. I think it has always been my protection mm. is mm. being able to navigate um, life or being able to navigate at work. Yeah. So that way, whatever I'm assuming people are thinking or saying yeah, yeah. about me is automatically rebuttaled or like it automatically ends mm -hmm. um, when I'm able to show up and show out in these other ways. Yeah, yeah. Protection stands out to me. Um, I'm going to wrap soon, but I'm curious about what safety looks like. What is it? What are the conditions that y'all feel are better to allow for the most authentic versions of emotional expressions? What can your partners do, your families do, your friends do to make it a safe space? And then how do we create that? How do we create more safe Comfort. spaces? Comfort. Yeah. Comfort. Mm -hmm. You know what, uh, like I was explaining about my son. Mm -hmm. They like, they didn't want nobody to say, hey, don't think my dad weak. Mm -hmm. You know, don't forget from where he came. You yeah. know what I mean? There's a lot of things he showing us how to be strong. Yeah. The comfort, yeah. Dad, let it out, because mm -hmm. if it's pent in, someone can say some out of whack, and you forget logic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know we all been in that. You explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We all been in that situation where you don't know where this crazy strength came from. Where mm -hmm. hey, break all the glasses. Who wants a drink? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So comfort. Yeah, right. That's right. I, I would agree. No, I would. I would agree with that. We need, <clears throat> particularly men among men, need opportunities to create deeper bonds, similar yeah. to what Xavier was saying about the, the 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 project you're working on with the other brothers in the social impact space. Like, can we create space that is trustful, mm -hmm. that's affectionate? Mm -hmm. And I'm using that word intentionally, like yeah. where we can be graceful and loving mm -hmm. to one another. Um, I mean, this is probably the most sort of open conversation I've had with men yeah. you know, in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, mean, I was I was watching, you know, I was with a bunch of good guys watching football. We talk about football, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and these are folks. They were all very well educated, college graduates, yeah. you know, professionals. We don't talk about things like this. Yeah, yeah. And if we do it, you just hint at it. Yeah. You know, somebody's going through a divorce or they're, mm -hmm. they're worried about their kid mm -hmm. or there's, there's something's going on at work. Because I think Benji hit the nail on the head. I think we're all in a situation where we, we have to be seen as in control. Mm -hmm. Like we got this, you know? Yeah. But quite frankly, in order to truly get whatever you're trying to get, you need help. Yeah. And we should be willing to open ourselves up to that help. And and in many cases, it is emotional support. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love I it. Think I think we have to uh, wrap on that. Mm -hmm. oh, the only thing I want to mention, I think yeah. therapy could be that space to do so. Yeah. If you're present enough to firstly be able to accept that. Yeah. You know, because you got to be willing to go there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I've had willingness and I've done, I'm in therapy now, which is great. I think you need to have tools because we don't have sometimes write words, mm -hmm. how to express it, how to unpack things, mm -hmm, traumas, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. things that could have went on in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to get to that support and to that help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you really need to learn what you just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, therapy is a space to do that, and it could be a safe space mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. At Goodwill, we transform lives through the power of work. We believe work is at the heart of human potential through a bold mission of connecting people to work, preparing people for life. Goodwill Industries of Southeastern Wisconsin and Metropolitan Chicago is creating meaningful impact in the communities where we live, work, and serve. By eliminating barriers, we are making fulfilling work available to all so that individuals and communities can thrive Go to GoodwillSEW.com to learn how to have the power to support our mission. Hi, 
I'm Emily hooper Lansana. Join me and six incredible black women for the very special broadcast of Soul Collective, the storytellers, A Habit of Tenderness. Thursday, December 21st at 7 p.m. on CAN-TV, cable channel 19, streaming on CAN-TV.org and the CAN-TV Plus app. Experience the power of community television. All right, our time is up. Again, appreciate the conversations. Uh, unique too for me just to have such an open honest conversation um starting with cameras around right i just really appreciate y'all openness and y'all vulnerability in this moment to redefine strength not to be strong sometimes and then weak when we emotional but to have the emotional be the strength and that be the power and then tap into the wisdom of the bodies and just trying to alert us to what we need to do and how to adjust so I think this is very useful. Um, I think people will get a lot out of this. So I just want to thank, thank y'all for being willing to go there. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, that's good, good. Um, and once again, our time together has come to a close too quickly, fortunately. We're coming back to the circle next month for another hour together in conversation and community. For those of you watching at home or work or from your favorite park bench, thank you for taking this journey with us. It is our hope that together we can support and encourage one another to give ourselves and each other the space and the grace to be, to be and to feel with the freedom we deserve and to be and to feel. The physical and emotional well-being of black men doesn't always get the spotlight it deserves, but together we're committed to doing our part to change that. Thank you for stepping into this space with an open mind and an open heart and a commitment to creating space for brothers to talk, to share, and to learn more about themselves and each other. Until next time, I'm Dr. Obari Carbon, and good night.